So guys, welcome, welcome to chair yoga once again. Let us start sitting down today, unusually so. Join me, join me on your chair. So if you want to, you can have a little block for underneath the feet. Um, and uh, if you want to have it, you can have it in front of you. I'm just going to pop mine out of the way for now. And we're going to start today just by sitting for a moment. Sitting tall. Getting ourselves settled on our seat. So feeling the bony bits in your bottom, your sit bones, connecting down into your seat. Feeling that being the stable base from which you can lift your spine and lengthen it all the way as tall as it can be. Letting your shoulders drop down. Arms can either hang at the sides or you can rest your hands onto your lap so that your arms are a bit supported. Closing your eyes or taking your gaze to a point ahead of you or down that is not moving. And just taking a couple of breaths here, feeling yourself coming into the space that we're practicing yoga in today. Maybe moving slightly away from the other things that are going on in life in general. Settling. Centering. Sometimes it's uh, nice to use an intention for your practice. Today we're going to work at releasing energetic blocks. Perhaps you can dedicate your practice to yourself as a nurturing, loving thing to do. Perhaps you prefer to dedicate it elsewhere. That's okay too. When you're ready, you can bring your hands to Namaste, the center of the chest. Lift your chest just a touch and allow your chin to come forward as much as you need to feel a gentle stretch down the back of the neck. Nothing too uh, full on at this early stage in our practice. Smiling to yourself. And in your own time, releasing your head back to its neutral position, releasing the arms down and opening your eyes. Awesome stuff. So I've got my extra comfy pants on today because we're doing all of the sessions this week are restorative and um, uh, gentle, gentle and comfy, all about creating comfort in the body. So we're going to start with our feet just a little bit closer together and sliding one foot forward. It doesn't matter which one. And we're going to do Palmukta Asanas, the energy releasing postures for the body, starting with the toes. So perhaps uh, looking at your toes if you want to, you don't have to, you can simply look upright if you like. We're going to spread the toes out as we inhale and scrunch the toes up as we exhale. So inhale, spreading the toes out, finding space between the toes, exhaling, closing those spaces, curling the toes into the foot. Inhaling, spreading. Exhaling, scrunching. Inhaling, spreading. Exhaling, scrunching. Inhaling, spreading. Exhaling, scrunching. Inhaling, spreading. Exhaling, scrunching. Now the whole foot. Inhale, the whole foot, toes back towards you, flexing through the heel. Exhale, point the toes all the way in front. Inhaling up, exhaling down. Inhaling up, exhaling down. Inhaling, flexing, exhaling, pointing. Inhaling, flexing, exhaling, pointing. Just resting your foot back into its natural position. 
We're going to lift the foot up a little. So if you're able to, you can hold underneath the back of the uh, thigh of the leg you're working with and maybe lean your upper body slightly away to counterbalance the weight of the leg. And if you feel that you can't do that, you can lift the foot just enough off the floor. We're going to do some ankle rotations. So rotating your, your foot or your ankle um, a few times in, in the first direction using whichever method works best for you, and then rotating in the opposite direction as well. Very good. So now you know what we're doing, we're just gonna to come to center, and then we're going to try to coordinate this breath and mo this movement with our breath. So we're gonna inhale as we roll the ankle halfway around the circle, and exhale as we roll the ankle the other side of the circle. So inhaling, and exhaling, inhaling, and exhaling. One more time this way, inhaling, and exhaling. Other way, inhaling, and exhaling. Nice and slow to inhale, and exhale. Inhaling, exhaling, inhaling. Exhaling. We're just gently going to lower this foot down to the floor and just observe the, the difference between the two sides of the body. And we'll do the same thing with the opposite side. So stretching this leg out in front. First begin by spreading the toes as far apart as you can as you inhale and scrunching them up a little bit closer together as you exhale. Inhaling, spreading. Exhaling, scrunching. Inhaling, opening. Exhaling, closing. Inhaling. Exhaling, just the toes. Inhaling. Exhaling. Inhaling. Exhaling. One more. Inhaling and exhaling. Now the whole foot. Inhale, flex the heel away from you. Exhaling, pointing the toes away from you. Inhaling, flexing. Exhaling, pointing. Inhaling. Exhaling. Inhaling. Exhaling. One more, inhaling and exhaling. And then finding a way to support your leg, either just lifting the foot off the floor a bit, hugging the leg in a little bit, leaning back away as you hold underneath. We'll just do a few rotations with the foot in one direction and in the opposite direction too. Then we're going to coordinate this breath with our movement. So starting in the center, inhale as you draw halfway around the circle with your foot and exhale as you draw the other half. Inhaling, nice slow movement. Exhaling, also slow in the breath. Inhaling. Exhaling. Inhaling. Exhaling. I want to do one more this way. Inhaling. Exhaling. Let's go the other way. Inhaling. Exhaling. Inhaling. Exhaling. Inhaling. Exhaling. Inhaling. Exhaling. In the center, just replacing that foot to the floor, observing the difference between the two sides of the body. Hopefully now the, the ankles and feet feel nice and awake. And we can just rock up onto the toes and then back onto the heels, lifting the toes a little. So up onto the toes, back onto the heels. Just finding our uh, feet on the floor. Very good. One more time and back. 
very good. So now we're going to move back to the first leg. Um, and if you can, holding your leg towards you, holding underneath the back of the thigh. And if not, just lifting the leg a little off the floor. We're going to bend and stretch this leg. The idea is not to make the leg absolutely straight and then absolutely bent, but to do a little what's called a, a knee crank, uh, a little movement. I've just turned sideways so it's easier to see. So holding your leg, if you can, leaning slightly back um, to counterbalance the weight of the leg, firm in the belly, and then flexing the foot, just kicking. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If you want to, you can rest down here or you can do another ten. One, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Lovely. So if you've rested, coming back into the, this position, and then just imagining you're stirring the foot, stirring, creating a circle with the foot, but the movement is much more from the knee. You'll also feel that your thigh bone, uh, your thigh moves a little. Let's go in the opposite direction as well. Little stirring. This is where we channel our inner Moulin Rouge dancer. Very good. And then we're going to gently ease that foot to the floor and just again observing the difference between the two sides of the body. Same thing on the other side. We'll draw in the left leg or just lift it a little off the mat, uh, off the floor and lean slightly back away if you, that's the position you're taking. Flex your foot and kicking for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Resting here if you need to or doing another ten. One, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then if you can, stirring the foot as you hold the leg slightly off the mat, uh, off the floor. Going in one direction, making nice big circles with the foot and then in the opposite direction too. Awesome stuff. And then allowing that foot to come to the floor so this is the way we can do it if we if we have the uh, movement and space to be able to lift the leg towards us but how do we do that if that doesn't work for us so you can sit yourself much further back in your seat so that your thigh is much more supported by the chair itself and then we can do that same movement again starting with your first leg Flex your foot and just bend and straighten the leg. One, two, three, four. Be careful not to kick the chair. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Again, you can make little stirring movements. You might need to move some things out of the way. You can keep your toes much more on the floor here if you want to. And the opposite way as well. Sometimes we must adapt to our space. And coming back to the center, we'll do the same thing on the other side. So flexing that, the opposite foot, and kicking for 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Lovely. And then making a stirring motion with that foot. You can feel what moves in your thigh here, opposite direction as well, but it's mostly coming from, the movement is mostly coming from the low leg underneath. Very good. And then bringing yourself back to center. And I will just turn my chair back this way. Uh, so we're going to do a little bit of movement into the hips now. So if you center yourself with your feet um, and we're going to open one foot out to the side 
and then back to the center. So we're opening through the knee. So opening the knee to the side and back to the center. Simple movement, just doing as much or as little as feels comfortable. First moving one, then the other. Try to feel the firmness of effort required on the outside of your body as you move open. You might need a little strength in your center here. Very good. And then resting with your feet a little bit closer, a little bit further apart, sorry, and hands on the hips, we're going to stir our upper body around. So we're going to make uh, circles, imagining like you have a paintbrush on the crown of your head, and you're making a circle on the ceiling, if that helps. Just doing a, a movement that feels comfortable. So if anything doesn't feel right, if it twinges, or if you have any discomfort, then make a much smaller circle, firm in the belly, or rest out of this. Let's go the opposite way as well. I'm hoping you can't hear my chair creaking too much. Or indeed, the rest of me. <laughs> so you can make your circles much smaller. They can be much more subtle. Um, just doing what feels right to you. We'll go one more in this direction and come back to the center. So now we've done uh, things for the low body. We're going to do things for our upper body. So if you reach your hands out in front of you um, and they can be low down, they don't need to be up. But if you're able to hold your arms out at about shoulder height, then you'll find that that helps you to build strength in the upper back. Um, so it's quite a nice thing to do. But at the same time, if this is a stressful position to hold your arms in, lower them till it becomes more comfortable. And it can even be done with the arms down by the side if that's the most comfortable, OK? So we're going to spread the fingers out as we inhale. And as we exhale, put the thumbs into the palms and wrap the rest of the fingers around. So inhaling, opening the fingers wide, spreading them apart. Exhaling, thumbs in first, and wrap the fingers around. Inhaling, opening the fingers and thumbs wide. Exhaling, thumbs in first, wrap the fingers around. Inhaling. Exhaling. Inhaling. Exhaling. Inhaling, exhaling, last one, inhaling, exhaling. And then we're just going to soften the arms down to the side, just to relax some of that effort in the shoulders. And if you've been holding your arms in a position that's challenging for the body, you might feel this in your arms and your shoulders in your upper back a little bit. It's OK as long as you can release. So let's just roll the shoulders a little bit. And we'll go in the opposite direction as well. OK, then we're going to interlace the fingers and see if you can make a sort of wavy motion with the hands and the fingers and the wrists and the elbows a little bit. Very good. See if you can go the other way as well. But don't worry if that doesn't naturally happen. If it feels like one coordination step too far. No worries. Last one. And then resting the arms down by the side. Again, if you need to shrug out the shoulders, you can do that too. We're going to reach our arms out in front of us again. This time we're going to let our fingers drape and then inhale as you bring the fingers up towards the ceiling and exhale as you reach the fingers as far around as you can towards the inner, uh, the inner wrist. Breathing in as you come up, breathing out as you reach the fingers around. Breathing in and up, 
breathing out and under. Breathing in and up. Breathing out and under. Breathing in and up. Breathing out and under. Last one. Breathing in and up. Breathing out and under. And then from here, just allowing the arms to rest down by the side. We'll roll the shoulders just a little bit. It's quite a nice thing to do. And then we're going to bring the hands together again here in the center, interlacing the palms and keeping interlacing the fingers even. Can't interlace palms. Um, keeping the palms together as much as you can and elbows nice and tight to the, the side, just rolling through the wrists. Making like a figure of eight and doing what feels comfortable. So try to make your movements smaller if it's more comfortable and make it larger if you've got motion and space to do that. Let's go the opposite way as well. That's always a bit of a feat of coordination for me. This is good brain gym for us to use the two sides of the body in balance. Okay, and then coming back to the center, separating the hands and just shaking out your wrists a little bit if that feels comfortable doing that. And releasing. So let us take our fingertips onto our shoulders. And here, we're going to do this motion, but it needs to be in a place that's comfortable for you. So particularly, perhaps, Annette, just taking t a care with your um, left side. Yeah, your left side. Um, and just easing yourself into a position that's comfortable. If you're able to lift the elbows up so that they are either side of the shoulders, then that's great. Um, anywhere in between is fine too. Fingertips on shoulders to begin with. You're going to sit tall and support the body with the effort in the front uh, of the abdomen. Inhale as we reach the arms open and exhale as we bring the fingertips back to the shoulders. Try to keep the upper arms quite still. Inhaling and exhaling. Inhaling and exhaling. Inhaling and exhaling. Just one more like this. Inhaling and exhaling. From this position, making circles with the elbows. So gentle circles you can start to be uh, start quite small. And then if you'd like to, you can build up to a fuller circle a range of movement. And our final step is to coordinate with the breath. So inhaling as you draw the elbows together and up and exhaling as you draw the shoulder blades towards you behind the body and down. Inhaling forward and up, exhaling back and down. Inhaling forward and up, exhaling back and down. Releasing the arms down to the side. Shrugging out the shoulders if you need to. Then we'll bring the fingertips to the shoulders again, lift the elbows in front of the body. And again, lifting as high as feels comfortable. Above the shoulders is not really helpful. So about shoulder height or slightly below is fine. Inhaling as you reach the hands open in front of you and exhaling, touching the shoulders again. Inhaling, firm in the belly as well. Exhaling, just touching to the shoulders. Inhaling, keeping the elbows lifted if you can. Exhaling. Inhaling. And exhaling. Just one more. Inhaling. And exhaling. Keeping the fingertips there, just relax the elbows down to the side. The, the previous time we drew the elbows together and up. And if you did it the opposite way, just reversing that. But this time we're going to take the elbows behind. So making small circles to begin with. Going in whichever direction is the opposite of the one that you previously did. Building up your circles to a point that feels like a full range of movement for you. 
and then we'll coordinate with our breath as well. So breathing in as we open the elbows behind the body and up, breathing out, drawing the elbows together and down, breathing in back and up, breathing out forward and down, breathing in back and up, breathing out forward and down, last one, breathing in back and up, breathing out forward and down. Relaxing the arms down to the sides, giving the shoulders a bit of a shrug, anything that feels good here. We don't want to forget our necks, so uh, resting your hands wherever is comfortable for you. And we're just going to begin by making some small movements with the head. So if you imagine drawing a sideways figure of eight with your nose or infinity sign with your nose, and reversing that motion. Very good. Then let's try and do an up and down eight. So tracing the figure of an eight, an upright eight, and reversing that motion. Don't worry about the coordination. If it works only in one direction, that's fine. And then coming back to center. We're gonna try and roll our shoulder blades a little bit down the back to open the chest, feel the lift down the center of the body or up the center of the body. Create a little bit of space between the chest and the chin without lifting the chin away from the floor, if that makes sense. So we want the chin about parallel to the floor. Shoulders working nicely. Breathing in here in the center. And as you breathe out, turn to look over one shoulder. Breathe in back to the center. Breathing out, turning to look over the opposite shoulder. Breathing in back to center. Breathing out as you twist. Breathing in back to center. Breathing out as you twist. This time, we're gonna hold. So breathe in back to center. Breathing out. Turn and hold in whichever direction you're going. So we want to feel a little bit that we're in our comfortable range of movement. We're not pressing to go further than the body feels comfortable doing. We're not trying to ease out stiffness by working through it, forcing through it. We're just meeting the resistance of the body wherever that is. What we can do here, instead of pressing further into a twist, is to take our opposite shoulder backwards. So if you turn to your left, just take your right shoulder back behind you a little bit. Even slide your hand back towards your uh, right hip. If you're turned in the opposite direction, then you'll take your left shoulder backwards. And you may feel a little gentle increase of the length across the front of the body. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Then relax your shoulder and draw your head back to the center. In the center, just make any movements that feel good. And then we're going to lift in the center of the body, take the shoulders back and turn the head to the opposite side. And hold wherever you get to, just feeling that you're not pressing through anything, meeting your stiffness, meeting the resistance of your body and being quite happy there for a few breaths. Then when you're ready, you can take the opposite shoulder back a little bit. So sliding your hand back, in this case, and turn to the right, sliding my left shoulder backwards feeling perhaps just a little increasing length across the chest on the opposite side of the body from the one you are turning towards. Take another deep breath in and deep breath out. Relax first your shoulder and then bring your head back to the center. And in the center, we're just gonna move the head in nice small movements to release any uh, feelings of effort. 
And if you want to, you can also roll your shoulders a little bit, do a little bit of uh, dancing, jiggling shoulders if that feels good. So our next uh, neck, neck work is to retract your chin, lift tall, and gently draw your chin towards your chest, just to a point where you feel a gentle stretch at the back of the neck. And then we're gonna roll the head towards one shoulder and back to the center, and then towards the opposite shoulder. Really slow, gentle movements here. Not forcing or pressing, just moving quite comfortably within your range of movement. Feeling perhaps the structures in the neck, finding length, finding space. And if it feels comfortable, you can take the head a little bit back, but not much, and then up and over to make a little circle. So we don't want to roll the head all the way backwards, but we can do a little lift to join the semicircle into a full circle and in the opposite direction as well. And if something feels uncomfortable or if it doesn't feel right for your body, then do a previous variation or rest out of an exercise. One more in this direction. We'll come back to the center with the chin towards the chest. A little firmness in the belly. And we're going to put the bottom teeth over the top teeth, roll the head back up to neutral, and then take the chin up towards the ceiling. So bottom teeth over top teeth. You'll feel the length down the front of the throat, the top of the chest. Holding and breathing here for a moment. And then gently rolling all the way down again, chin towards the chest, release your teeth as you go. Take a moment here, smile to release the tension in your chest and your face. And then come back to center. Awesome, upright with the head. Very good. Rest your arms down by your sides and just roll your shoulders. A couple of times backwards and a couple of times forwards. Very good. Bring the palms together at the center of the chest, turn the palms open and then reach the arms as wide as you can and take, if you can, the thumbs back behind you. At the same time, roll your little fingers up towards the ceiling as if you were holding two cups and reaching the, the thumbs as far back behind as feels comfortable whilst keeping the shoulder blades down. So it's no good if the shoulders come up to here. You need to roll the shoulder blades down at the same time, opening the chest, breathing deeply. Try not to drop your chin forward to counter the pose. Keep your head nice and neutral. If it feels comfortable, you can gently turn it from side to side or make some small movements to check the neck is free. One more deep breath in. And then as you breathe out, just relax your arms back to a more neutral place. Turn the palms down and float the hands to the side. When you get there, make any dancing movements with your shoulders that feel good. And then bring your hands back to Namaste. Keeping the chest lifted, take the palms out, uh, arms out to the side, but with the palms pressing away from you at the side. So these can even be in front of the body, doesn't need to be behind the body. But maybe experiment with your arms moving slightly forwards and slightly back where you feel the best sense of length. And there, draw the shoulder blades down the back. Feel that broadening of the chest, lengthen into the heels of the hands, bring the fingers as most, as, as most back towards the body, 
as, as back towards the body as you can. <laughs> towards your body as much as you can. I know that you're going to be giggling at your end. But feel Sarah, I've lost sound. Is that better? That's it. Thank you. I'll unmute. I'll, I'll mute myself now. Sorry. No worries. Sorry about that, chaps. Um, so, I don't know what I did. Um, so we're going to stand up now. That's what we're going to do. So it's just as well. Uh, we, were, we were doing that anyway. Okay. I can hear someone. I'm just going to uh, do a remute. There we are. Fabulous. Okay, guys. So we've been sitting down for a little while. So we're going to do a little bit more standing now. I'm just making some space. So taking the feet nice and wide apart, keeping a little softness to your knees, firmness in the belly, and we'll gently start by twisting from side to side. And this will also help to ease out any tension from the back of the body from when you have a uh, uh, from where you've been working so far. And you'll be surprised how much effort we put into the Paumukta asanas. So letting your arms and shoulders be nice and heavy and loose. And if you want to, you can pivot on your toes a little, keeping that firmness in the center of the body, encouraging the tummy muscles to draw inwards and upwards. And if it feels good, you can tap the body anywhere that you fancy. So you can touch the opposite shoulder in front of you. You can touch the opposite hip behind. Or just allow the arms to fall on the body across the abdomen, the hips, the buttocks, wherever feels best. And if you want to, you can add a little bend of the knees in the center. So bend and twist. Bend, twist, bend, twist. You don't have to add that element if you don't want to. That's the one that always throws Poppy off. Makes her wobble about when we're doing kids yoga. <laughs> Me too, actually. And then you can let your bend go, keep the pivot. Let your feet come to steadiness and just sway yourself back to stillness as well. And then here, we've got the feet. Um, I've automatically readjusted mine, but if yours are slightly turned out and you like them turned out, that's fine. Just gonna roll the shoulders a little bit. And the other way as well. Then we can bring our feet a little bit closer together still. And if you want to, uh, so with this, with standing postures like this, the closer together the feet are, the more challenging it is. So give yourself as much space between your feet as you need to give yourself stability here. We're going to do a little uh, standing salute. So uh, uh, the, the motions that we need from the spine are side bends and twists. So standing tall here reaching the fingertips down to the floor, reaching the crown of the head up to the ceiling, firming the belly, breathing in, and breathing out, bringing the hands to namaste. So 
We're going to breathe in, reach the arms out and up. Breathe out, bring the hands down to Namaste again. Breathe in one more like that. Breathing out, breathing in, sorry, reaching the hands down, out and up. Breathing out, drawing the hands down to Namaste. Then we'll breathe in, reaching the arms up. Breathe out, separate the hands and glide your shoulders down the back. Breathe in as you firm the feet into the floor and the belly muscles. And as you breathe out, just swaying a little to your right side. Breathe in back to the center, really firm in the belly. Breathing out, sway a little to the left. Good job, guys. Breathing in and up. Breathing out and over. Breathing in and up. Breathing out and over. Let's do one more to each side. Breathe in and up. Breathe out and over. Breathe in and up. Breathe out and over. Breathe in all the way up to the center. Turn the hands, breathe out the arms down to the sides. And we'll just take a little rest before we do our twist. So here you can roll the shoulders if it feels comfortable to do that. You can make movements with the neck if it feels comfortable to do that. Or I like to roll out my wrists anytime that I've been stretching into the fingertips. I get a little clicky in the wrists. So doing what feels good to you. You're going to bend the knees and straighten, bend the knees and straighten. And now we'll do that whole sequence again, but we will do it with twists instead of side bends. So once we've done our rounds with our hands, we'll come up to the center and then we'll twist, widening the elbows and softening the knees. You can't see in my baggy trousers, but uh, my knees are, are nice and bent. Coming back to the center and going to the opposite side. So wide elbows back to this sort of uh, lengthened position and then the opposite. OK, so we'll start with a few deep breaths. So breathing in, reaching the arms out and up. Lengthen the front of the body, lift the belly, breathe out, bring the hands down to the center of the chest. Let's do one more like that. Breathing in, reaching out and up. You can even look up a little if you like. Breathing out as you draw the hands down to the center of the chest. This time going back the way you came, breathing in and up. Breathing out as you separate the hands and drop the shoulders down. You're going to firm the belly and breathe in in your center. And as you breathe out, widen the elbows, turning to the right. Breathing in back to the center, turning to the front. Breathing out, turning to the left, elbows wide, belly firm. Breathing in and reaching up and tall. Breathing out as you twist to the right, knees can be soft. Breathing into the center, reaching tall. Breathing out to the left, knees soft. Breathing in, one more to each side. Breathing out as you twist to the right. Breathing in, reaching tall. Breathing out, twist to the left. Breathing in, back to the center. Breathing out as you separate the hands and float the arms down to the side. When you've done that, just rolling the shoulders, bending and straightening the knees, whatever feels good to you. OK, guys, so we're going to use our chairs for a little forward bending. Um, and, oh, and actually, we did the cat pose on the chairs last week, didn't we? So let's try that again this week. So standing to the side of your chair or face onto your chair, if you prefer, you can put your hands down so that they are supported by the seat and move your feet slightly back. So you make a little sort of tabletop position. You want almost to make, um, uh, to use the hands to uh, find the same length in our upper body towards the floor as we do have in our legs. And then here we're gonna bend the knees just a little bit, lift the belly muscles. And as you inhale, look forward, lift your tailbone up looking forward and as you exhale round through your spine tuck your tail under draw your chin towards your chest 
breathing in as you come forward, opening your chest, looking forward, gliding the shoulder blades down, breathing out, scoop your belly in, round through the spine, chin to chest. Breathing in as you think of lengthening the front of the body, but anchoring in the belly muscles. Breathing out as you lengthen the back of the body, anchoring in the buttocks muscles. Breathing in. And breathing out. Very good. As you come back to center, just letting your breath find its natural rhythm. Step towards your chair, bend your knees and stand tall. And cat pose is lovely on the back, particularly, and you can do it sideways as well as backwards and forwards, but we'll look at that a different week. So turning your chair around or coming to the back of your chair um, and preparing for downward facing dog. So we're going to walk our feet away from the chair, keep the knees a little bit soft, lengthen the tailbone out behind us. And so we bring the torso more parallel to the floor, scooping the belly in and finding that length that feels good to you, wherever feels good to you. And when you get there, maybe just gently turning your head from side to side. It doesn't need to be much of a turn, just a, a little uh, shimmer, just to find that space in the back of the neck as well. And then taking some deep breaths here. If you want to, you can also wiggle your tailbone from side to side. It'd be a lovely thing to do. After your next exhalation, bending the knees deeply, looking towards your chair and then walking yourself in, using the chair for support as you come up, not letting go until you're absolutely sure you're not dizzy. And when you feel like you're not dizzy, you can release the arms down to the side. Make any movements that feel good with your spine. And then we are going to take our seat again so that we can do a lovely breathing exercise super duper now we're going to move from here to relaxation so if you want a, a, a blanket at all or any kind of extra support or if you'd like to do this lying on your sofa reclining in the position of your choice channel, channeling your inner cleopatra perhaps or lying on the floor if you're um, quite comfortable getting up and down from the floor. If you're in your chair, try to sit with your um, back upright. And if you're choosing a reclined position, this can be done, uh, this breathing exercise can be done in your reclined position, no problem at all. Just try to think about length in your spine, okay? So we're gonna sit tall, we're going to maybe take our hands into chin mudra if you'd like to. First fingers and thumbs together, other fingers long. Palms turned up or down. Relaxing the shoulders, maybe just rolling them towards uh, the shoulder blades down the back a little. Keeping that lift in the center of the body. And perhaps here you're comfortable to feel comfortable to close your eyes, especially in your own space or gaze at a point ahead of you that's not moving. Lowering your gaze. Give your eyelids a bit of a rest. Just as we did at the beginning of the class, becoming aware of the firmness of your seat on your seat or the firmness of your body against your support. Feeling the length through the spine into the crown of the head. And feeling the space around you that you have to breathe into when you sit this way. Space behind you for the breath to move into the back of the body. Space underneath the arms for the breath to move into the side ribs. And space in front of the body. 
for the breath to move, particularly the front of the ribs and the abdomen, the upper chest. So here, perhaps you've already developed a nice deep breath. And if not, just gently lengthening your breath now, softening the features of your face and relaxing your shoulders, your jaw. And if you feel comfortable counting your breath, you can begin to count the length of your inhalation and your exhalation. And if counting the breath doesn't feel so good, then it's good to use a phrase instead, like breathing in love, breathing out peace and love. If you add something to the exhalation part of your phrase, your exhalation will be slightly longer. If you're using a phrase, continue in this way. If you're counting your breath, extend only your exhalation part by one tenth. Checking that your face is relaxed, your shoulders are relaxed. And if you can, extend your exhalation by one more count, one more part of your phrase. Only do that if it feels comfortable. You can keep your face and your shoulders and chest relaxed. Allow yourself to keep this breath, but move your body into the back of your seat or relinquish, or sorry, surrender your support into your, surrender your body into your support. So we can move into relaxation, but maintain this breath. Allow your face to relax. The area around your eyes, your tongue, your jaw. If you feel your 
awareness drifting from your breath and your body relaxing a little deeper, just allowing that to happen.